What's up, everybody? Uh, I know it's been a while, so I want to finally get back on here. Been kind of busy with things. So, welcome back to another episode of Bassman Outdoors, and welcome to all the new subscribers that we've gotten. Thank you to you guys. Uh, hopefully, we can help you guys learn some stuff, gain some knowledge, or anything to help out each other. So, I know things have been kind of hectic with all the COVID-19 stuff and everything, but... Everybody on here watching, I hope everybody's doing good and staying healthy. So, but it's been a while since I made a video, so I figured I better get back on it. So today, so far for me this spring, I've been dealing with cool, muddy water. And uh, some people, they think, still are kind of in that mindset, cool water, fish deep. Uh, what I discovered last year, that I didn't know, I had to do a little bit of research, and I tried again this year, and it's still working. Um, seems like this time of year, those bass are really starting to come up, and they're starting to get way, way up in the shallows, about as shallow as they can get. I've seen fish so far this year with their backs almost sticking out of the water. And, um, they're still, they're cloudy water, so they ain't, they ain't seeing lures all that well. And a lot of people, they see that cloudy, muddy water, and it kind of deters them. Well, we're going to be talking about something today that might kind of help somebody out if they don't know, or a little bit of refresher. This time of year... I am, oh, well, this time of year, I like to go with my red crankbaits and all that stuff, like we did in the transition video. But in this certain situation, the way the water is now, I've been mainly going with my jigs, my Ned rigs, my uh, Texas rig worms, and spinnerbaits. And the reason I've been going with these is I'm either going with bright colors or dark colors, about black and blue, some whites and orange, somewhere around there, so a little bit of brown and orange too um the reason i'm going with these is either for bright colors really popping out with those fish like kind of on a darker day sunny day i'll start throwing the darker colors to get that silhouette out there but the way they're biting right now seems to me is just how they were last year I will go find somewhere shallow or find some branches down the water, something like that, some kind of structure. And I'll throw in there. Now, some days I'll be using a smaller Strike King. This one I kind of rigged myself because it lost the skirt. A little Strike King spinnerbait with a little trailer or something. And on other days I'll be throwing a bigger one like that. Now on days that spinnerbaits aren't working, they're more towards the bottom. But they're still feeding kind of aggressive. They want some more aggressive. I'll go with something like this Stevo Striker swim or swing tail jig. This one, I believe, actually has got me the biggest one I've caught this year, which was a 2.9. If you looked at my Instagram, you saw the scale pictures on that guy. Or um, if I want to go a little more finesse but still have some good size, this is a Huntington uh, Orange Sherbert finesse worm. I'll use something like that. By the way, Huntington Lures, they uh, came out with a new rubber worm that I talked to them about. Uh, it's a orange and yellow, solid orange and yellow. It's not kind of see-through like that. It's called the Dallas Wildfire, and uh, I had them make that for me. Uh, it's on there now for sale because I had a color worm I used very similar to that a few, last year. Found it in an old bait shop. The bait shop closed down. Never been able to find those words since. Me and my buddies have looked all over the place. Bass Pro, Cabela's, Walmart, everywhere. We were never able to find them. Anyway, it's one of the best worm colors I've ever used. So they replicated that. And they have it on there now. It's called the Dallas Wildfire. Check it out. I will have a link in the description for them. So, alright. Let's get to kind of tactics here. Um, what I mainly go for is because... The water's getting warmer. Some people, they get a little antsy. I'm guilty of it. I get a little antsy at the beginning of the year when I know they're really starting to bite. Don't be afraid to fish fast, like cover water, you know? But at the same time, don't be afraid to also slow it down if you have to. And one of my biggest, biggest tips I can give for this time of year is find a spot where you think those fish will be and pick it apart. Like, um, well, I've caught a few fish out of this piece of brush, different fish. They're different sizes so far this year. Um, I'll toss up under these limbs or on the edge of them. Pop like this uh, Huntington Lures 
swim jig. I've used it there, and I've used the swing tail there, and had luck with both of them there. Uh, you can swim them. You can jig it across the bottom, hop it. Um, if you don't get that bite on that first throw, do not back off of that spot. Right now, these fish, they're not. I wouldn't quite say they're still lethargic very much, but they're not having to eat as much, and the visibility is low. What more, it seems to me, has been effective, especially with your noise-making spinnerbaits, your, either your Indiana rigs or, or, or your Colorado blades. What seems to me the most is sometimes they may not see it, and when they see it, they want to strike it. Or you have to irritate them. That's why I say pick it apart. You could toss any of these um, next to that bass. He sees it once, no big deal. Sees it twice, it's starting to get on his nerves a little bit. That third time, he'll hit it. Now, so far this year, it's not been a very light tap. You don't know he's on there. I've had, they just bite and run. Now, days that these lures, like your jigs, your bigger lures, your chatterbaits, are not working, that is when I definitely, definitely go with my Ned Rigs. This is the tail of a Huntington lure, or a worm that I made, because I lost that last piece of worm, and I Ned Rigged it. Now, I know a lot of people are very picky on their Ned Rigs. They want it to stand up under the water perfectly, and I have tested these out. They do stand up. Actually, I will uh, get a video of testing this out here for you real quick so you can see. All right, so got a cup of water. We have our Ned Rig with the Huntington lure tail on it. That is literally just the tail of this worm, one of these. And like I said, a lot of people, they want their Ned Rigs to stand up, not fall over. Last time I tested this, this did stand up, so let's try it again. You see right there? Standing up pretty good. So that's why I like to kind of use these as a, we got some water on the table, makeshift Ned Rig if I have to. If I don't have any other Ned Rigs, TRDs, or anything like that. So, now, no, another thing you notice, a lot of these lures, very, I stick to kind of a similar... A different approach a different look but very similar color now the reason I do this is unless like a hundred percent you know for a fact that they are just not biting on that color that day stick with the same color uh, like I said that black and blue you're going for a silhouette stick with it now the reason why I have different size spinner baits of that color different size jigs I meant to, uh, didn't pull out the football head jig, but I got a couple football head jigs just like this of this color. Now, and chatterbait, a little bit more of a noise maker than the rest. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because you don't know quite, unless you've got a fish finder to tell me. I don't fish with a fish finder. Uh, honestly, I just never really had the opportunity, so I learned to go without. You don't know where those fish are going to be level wise, quite, if they're up under that brush. So, you want something that's going to look similar, but act different. Say, this guy, swim jig right here. I've had luck just swimming it across the water, or through the water. It's Huntington lure, half-ounce swim jig. But I've also had a lot of luck bouncing it on the bottom. Letting it sink, then pop, pop, pop. I've had a lot of luck doing that. And this guy, same way. Swimming him, or jumping him. Now, see, that's given that whole jumping across the bottom or swimming through just the water column. Now, uh, if they want, they now say they're up higher in this column, they're not really searching the bottom, they're not quite up top, they're right up in the middle. But a swim jig, just a swim jig, ain't doing it for them. They're just, they ain't having it. That's when I will usually pull out spinner baits. Especially if it's a sunnier day, give that good flash. And they show up pretty good on an on sunny day, too. Sometimes that can be the difference, just get a little stand out, especially if it's got brush or weeds or something on the bottom, or through what you're pulling it through. Now, like back to my uh, chatterbait here, if you're once 
if they want something that it's going to have flash, it's going to look very similar, but really make noise, catch their attention, kind of catch their attention from a distance so they hear it coming. They know it's coming. They're going to look for it. They're going to smell for it. They're going to use that line along their sides to sense for that lure, those vibrations. This is definitely what I would go with. This is a Z-Man chatterbait, just regular little chatterbait. These all have the same trailers on them. This is a trailer I'm very, very big fan of. It's a young black and blue crawdad trailer. Now, on those, like I said, kind of sunny days or maybe even overcast, I've had a look with both, mainly sunny days when you got that, sunny days when you got that dark color. Now, you want, say you've got a brighter day or maybe even a darker day, either one, uh, but you want something that's kind of, kind of, pop but not goes nuts uh bright colored chatterbait probably work or that's when i go with, start going with this white or a bright or a chartreuse spinnerbaits and sometimes double bladed just to give it that extra little oomph that little pop to it and uh, once again that's where my brighter colored football head jigs go because if they're in that water column, they're on the bottom, but they don't want something that's as active as hopping around, and they want something dragging, drag a football head along the bottom. And like I said, I've said in other videos, um, I know a lot of people, they don't like to throw these in muddy water or muddy bottoms. You know, they tend to dig in, get stuck. For me, I tend to like them when they're doing that. For me, I think they look, they look a little more realistic. But on days, because I've had days where they would not hit any of these. Just... None of it wasn't having any of it. They just passed me right on by. But you start throwing something that a little more simple, like this Texas rig or this Ned rig, sometimes that's what will get you bite on these earlier cloudy water, cooler water days. So that's, I just want to throw this little tip out there, try and talk to you guys about it, see what y'all think. These are some of my top lures for this time of year. Uh, you go ahead and try them and Y'all have a good night, or good morning, I guess. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm making this video. So, y'all have a good day. Um, I know with everything going on, there, things are a little tough right now. But I hope you guys get a chance to get out on the water, have some luck. I might be out on the water tomorrow or next few days, depending on the weather. So, um, you guys, good luck to you. I hope everybody in your families and everything does good, and you guys have a good day.